Uh, yeah, it's so beautiful to be here, and uh, you know what an incredible place, and uh, what an incredible project that uh, you know Matthew and Brian and Joseph are engaged in here, and incredible opportunity. Um, and um, yeah, so I mean, it's brought up a lot of reflections, uh, you know, on, on my part. I, I live in New York City in the East Village, uh, among homeless people and, and rats, and you know, chlorinated. Uh, tap water and all that kind of stuff. So I always see things kind of through that urban perspective and also think about, you know, all the people, you know, in, in you know, in New York and that urban environment, the kind of downtrodden and, 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 and the, you know, people of different racial backgrounds who are living in projects just a couple blocks away from me, you know, who also deserve, you know, just the same opportunities that we have and then the opportunities to breathe good air and, and live beautiful lives and so on that somehow our society has systemically denied them at this point. Um, and anyway, so, you know, from, from that perspective, yeah, I mean, you know, when I think about what's happening on, on the earth, you know, I, I come from kind of the, the trajectory that I've gone through as an individual, where I grew up, you know, in New York, kind of a secular materialist, scientific background, um, and, um, you know, went through a kind of shamanic initiation process that I wrote about in my first book, Breaking Open the Head, uh, that involved visiting tribal people around the world and going through initiation ceremonies with them involving visionary sacred plants like ayahuasca and iboga and psilocybin and so on. And um, that was a, a profound uh, transition for me and ultimately, you know, led me to think a lot about this whole concept of initiation uh, as something that uh, the modern world has, has forfeited and lost and something that traditional tribal societies all around the world you know, have, have, have had since time immemorial. Um, and it's kind of, um, you know, when, when the modern world lost its kind of initiation uh, practices, anthropologists then in the 19th and 20th century documented them all around the world, whether it was Aboriginal walkabouts or vision quests or the use of sacred plants uh, or, you know, sun dances, you know, with the Native Americans in North America. And, you know, it was seen as sort of a cultural phenomenon. Um, but more recently, some thinkers, uh, particularly Joseph Chilton Pierce, wrote about it really well in a book called The Biology of Transcendence, have, have suggested that this kind of initiation or rites of passage have more than just a cultural function. They might have like a sort of neurobiological or neurophysiological function in that, um, you know, as human beings, the, 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 the aspect of the brain that makes us distinctly human is the prefrontal cortex or the neocortex, which just developed in the last 100,000 years. And that's what allows us to have our separate sense of identity, to, to you know, uh, sort of process symbols, abstract symbols, to use language, to plan for the future, to have foresight, and so on. But um, although it develops you know, through adolescence and into our maturity, it, it may be that it requires a second shock that has to be kind of in, uh, induced from outside, uh, kind of uh, either culturally or um, could be through some you know, catastrophic or disastrous scenario. Um, in, in a way, initiation is kind of like a self-willed, uh, you know, culturally induced disaster for, for the individual to go to the edge of their own awareness and, um, and kind of see what lies beyond it, you know? So, so if, you, if you look at these initiations as kind of, um, you know, ways that these cultures uh, create, it's that people were forced into visionary or transpersonal experiences. Um, and that then they came back, and you could look at initiation as having like a several part process. You know, there's that separation, the, the young men or young women are taken out of the society. There's the vision quest, the, the whatever is done to, to push them to the edge so they have to get in that vision to kind of enter transpersonal states of consciousness. And then there's a return and a reintegration and a welcoming back into the community. And the elders who actually then interpret the visions and place the whole experience in, in, in the context of that, of that culture, of that society. Um, and I think that, you know, modern culture, you know, since the 60s has been sort of seeking to go through a collective voyage of initiation. Um, and we've, you know, many people have done their own version of the separation and the initiation, whether it's shamanism or, you know, even yoga practices or meditation. Uh, but there's still, it's like the culture still hasn't really figured out how to welcome back in that next level of perception. And on a larger scale, you know, maybe we could look at the ecological crisis as a kind of collective rite of passage or planetary initiation for humanity as a whole. And it's even possible if you take this idea that it's something that um, is almost like a biological necessity, that, it, that it's something that's, that humanity has subconsciously self-willed to bring about our 
mutation or metamorphosis or capacity to reach the next level of consciousness, the next level of organization as a species. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and yeah, and so, and, and so you know, obviously it's like without, without initiation, we can think about the different reasons why modern society lost those practices. Um, you know, people are kind of adrift. You know, they don't have, a, they don't have like a, a greater narrative. You know, they don't have a greater sense of meaning. And also they don't have that reference point in a transpersonal state so they can go from just focusing on their own ego-centric uh, desires, you know, their, their local interests, to having a truly collective interest, you know? And so, you know, for, for, for tribal cultures, you couldn't be an adult if you went through an initiation. Uh, and in our society, maybe what we have on the mass scale is, uh, you know, a global society of kidults, you know? People who've been trapped in that egoic state, and therefore they're not able to take responsibility collectively or to see themselves embedded in a larger framework. Um, so yeah, so, so, you know, and I guess in a way, I, I think that we then have to, you know, maybe in a positive sense, you know, if, you know we're going to talk about story over the next few days, but, you know, think about a kind of mythological reframing of our situation and then maybe embrace this idea of the ecological crisis as an initiation where we can, you know, reconnect with a larger field of, of meaning and, um, you know, become kind of, in a sense, midwives or servants for this planetary crisis, you know? Um, yeah so, so, so yeah, so in a way, the initiation for us, since we're not being welcomed back in that same sense, is, is to then transform the, the, the society that we've inherited to um, you know, become harmonic with the biosphere and to kind of honor the, the deeper potentials that the human being has, which are kind of systemically suppressed by, 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 our, by our society. And um, you know, listening over the last few days, I mean, through some brilliant and amazing talks, the talk about climate change was bracing. You know, the, 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 the you know, information around the Arctic and, and all that stuff is just getting more and more um, kind of difficult, you know, to, to take in. Um, you know, it was also very interesting to hear the man from the airline speak, you know, and, and it's just something that I think we also need to be open to discussing is, um, you know, to what extent is the type of transformation that society faces um, considering what's happened with the ecological situation something that's possible within the current capitalist system? You know, or, or whether we're going to need a deeper systemic paradigm shift of how we're exchanging value. You know, I mean, um, you know, you know, will should will people have? And these are questions that I ask, which I'm sure all of us are asking. So let's just bring them to the to the surface. You know, like, you know, you know, will people be flying around the world in the same way five years from now, or three years from now, or ten years from now? Should they be? You know, should you know should you know how, how do we create a system where? You know the amount of meat that people are consuming is is largely you know downscaled. You know, um, and so so you know for me I guess in my work with the book uh, that I've been working on for the last number of years, it's been first of all recognizing this this kind of um, you know understanding it systemically as this as this planetary initiation, uh, and thinking about it also in a way almost like a biological uh, metaphors I think are really useful. Uh, we could think about it as like um, you know maybe humanity is on the cusp of realizing itself to be a superorganism, you know, that's one giant kind of planetary organism that's in a symbiotic relationship with the ecology of the Earth as a whole system, you know, and that's the ecological crisis is almost going to force us into that state of collective awareness, collective unity, and then if we were to think about what it would mean to make that kind of leap in understanding or mutation, you know, th then we would look at how we're sharing resources, how we're sharing information really differently, and, and um, you know, I think we could then begin almost remap, you know, human society. And then, for instance, as part of that, you know, thinking experiment about what it would mean if we saw ourselves as a planetary superorganism, you know, what we now call corporations, you know, might actually be kind of like the nascent organs uh, of, of, of that collective body. Um, you know, so, you know, an energy company is like the blood that circulates through an individual body. Or a media company is like the uh, you know perceptual mechanisms that takes raw data and transfers it through the whole through the whole you know system. You know, sanitation company is like the liver or kidney that's breaking down uh, waste and so on. And if we look at the paradigm that we inherit from biological evolution, there's actually a, you know a, a transition that's common from competition and domination to cooperation and symbiosis, right? And you know an example of that that's very close at hand is our own bodies. 
you know, which were once millions and millions of years ago, vast colonies of microorganisms that were, you know, competing against each other in the environment for scarce resources. And somehow in various states of crisis, learned how to work together to create more complex organs and then mesh those organs together into these like unbelievable contraptions that we find ourselves in, right? So, so, so it might be that, you know, at the moment corporations are, you know, enmeshed in a paradigm that's based on competition and domination. You know, they're, they're forced to maximize profits. You know, we've created a kind of game for them, you know, called the stock market, where a corporation has to, to survive, has to maximize profit, right? Uh, and, 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 and maximize shareholder value, you know? But, but that, that, that may also just be uh, the where we're at now with it, right? Like we could potentially redesign the, the underlying game machinery of, of the Wall Street system so that corporations become more like tra tra transparent, cooperative infrastructures that are sharing resources, you know, sh sh sharing, sharing knowledge transparently, you know? So, so it may be that, you know, the ecological crisis is the trigger to bring about a, a, a deep, you know, structural transition of human society toward cooperation and symbiosis. That's kind of what I've been trying to map out in my book. And I think, like, um, you know, maybe we can have, if anybody wants to have a discussion about it during the, the discussion later today, I'd be happy to, to host one. But we could think about, like, the three big wheels, I guess, from, from my perspective, um, which I, I created a wiki uh, um, called... Um, a center for planetary culture. We were looking at a regenerative society wiki. So what would be the, 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 the way to transform the system? And so the three big circles that we defined were the technical infrastructure, you know, agriculture, industry, energy, transport, urban design, then like the social, political, economic system, you know, the, the financial system, you know, government and so on, uh, how people make decisions together, let's say. Uh, and then the third would be consciousness, ideology, culture, and media. And it's like these three wheels are all like turning each other, right? So when one changes, the other ones also undergo a change, you know? So, um, so then we can, we can begin to map out like, you know, I mean, if we had a research center or a think tank, you know, maybe we could map out the different ways to, to make these changes. And for me personally, as, as a media maker, I tend to think that at this point, you know, like actually the technical infrastructure stuff, you know, feels like it's moving towards solutions, you know, in that we know that in 10 or 15 years we could globally distribute, you know, solar, renewable energy, like that, that's becoming more and more available. You know, a lot of the solutions on the technical side are there. Um, a lot of the social, political, and economic um, kind of um, opportunities are also becoming more and more clear as Ben Knight is going to be here later the next week talking about Lumio as ways that people can, you know, use the internet to make decisions together. Um, Maybe we could look at the internet as like a collective uh, nervous system. You know, if we think also about this evolutionary crisis that we're in, this, ec this ecological situation as almost like, like a birthing in a sense. Like maybe in a sense we're now in this kind of fetal development, we're like pushing through the birth canal. The crises are kind of like the, um, you know, the, 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 the sort of uh, contractions of the birthing process. And in a sense the internet, you know, self-organized as the nervous system for this collective superorganism, And now we actually have to, we're gonna be forced to learn how to make use of it as we push into this, this new world. Uh, and you know, ways that we can make decisions together collectively you know, as a civil society without necessarily needing governments, uh, top-down centralized institutions, you know, that, could, that could be a big piece of the puzzle. Um, yeah, so, so anyway, that's what I've been thinking about. For me, the, the media, the consciousness element is really also really key. Um, you know, I think a big throttling is, is, is the media itself, which um, is, um, you know, still basically putting out a paradigm that's based on fear and dependency. Um, I really got fascinated by the work of an Italian political philosopher, Antonio Negri, uh, and his, his, his idea was that essentially, you know, we, we normally, people normally think of their subjectivity as something which they just gain through their own experience, but, but actually on a very large scale, subjectivity itself is kind of a constructed or mass produced by the media, you know, and, and, and the government to a certain extent, the corporate industrial complex. Uh, you could look at the, the media as almost like a factory that's producing and distributing a certain type of consciousness or a certain type of subjectivity. And it creates like a frequency effect, you know, a frequency of consciousness in that it tells people how they should respond to authority, you know, what, to, what they should value, you know, um, what types of relationships are, are workable or appropriate for them. You know, so people take, take a lot of guidelines, you know, from, 
fr from that mass media. And I, and I think a big stumbling block, if we wanted to bring about a, a rapid transition of global society, is uh, the, the, the lack of an alternative media that's on a scale, a solutions-based, positive, proactive kind of media that's giving people a whole new um, insight in, into how they could live, how they could create healthy, resilient communities together, how they could do things like grow their own food. I mean, that, 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 you know, in a way, you need, you need a media that counteracts the, the, the sort of negative uh, Fox News and CNN, you know, global programming, you know. Um, all right, well, I got through most of what I wanted to say with about two minutes to spare. Um, I hope that made some sense. Okay, cool.